Hey guys, good morning. Today on the Vintage Speed Garage, we're going to be tackling the rear on our 66 Mustang and putting all of these great parts into place. We've got uh, some new urethane, uh, prothane urethane bushings to go into our leaf springs and rear shackles to tighten up the rear suspension. We've got uh, some KYB shocks that we're going to be putting on the back of it. And we're going to be tackling the brake system and re replacing all the components from the flex line, the hard lines, out to the brake shoes and the drums and all new brake hardware and wheel cylinders to uh, wrap up the brake work on the rear of our uh, Mustang. I received our new starter uh, the other day and put that into the Mustang, completed all of the battery cable wiring from the relay to the starter and back to the battery. All of that's wrapped up, good to go, tested, everything's working great. So uh, once we get the brake system done here, we'll be starting up and braking in our camshaft and then we should be drivable. So we're getting very close here uh, with our Mustang. I'm on the hunt for some tires for our Magnum 500, so hopefully I'll find those here this weekend, get them mounted up, and we'll have a good roller uh, ready for start and break in and some driving, maybe next week. So we've got a lot of work here to tackle. Let's get to it. Start turning some wrenches. Okay guys, we're here on the passenger rear axle uh, of our 66 Mustang, and uh, we're going to pull the drum off. We'll tackle removing the leaf spring getting the leaf spring bushings replaced here on both sides and then we'll deal with the brake lines uh, the hard lines here, the flex lines and our shocks so our drums look pretty good that's a plus and you hear that noise in the rear, rear end that's not good. Okay guys, well, the uh, leaf spring bushings gave us a little bit of a struggle here getting the center pin in place, but I was able to get it in place and uh, get the U-bolts tightened up. So now everything's done here on the driver's side uh, suspension. We've just got to replace all of our brakes here and we'll be good to go on the rear axle. I still have to do the brake lines too as well, the hard lines and the flexible line, but uh, we're making good progress here. So the next step is going to be replace all of the drum brake hardware on the driver's side. These are the main components that are going to go, um, the main springs that are going to go onto our rear drum brake setup. So your front shoe would sit here, your rear shoe would sit on the opposite side, your wheel cylinder would be up here in the middle, and at the bottom here is our adjuster. The adjusters are left and right, so make sure that you get the, the proper adjuster on the proper side. You can see this kit is marked with an R, on our self adjuster here which means this is the right side kit has the gold adjuster in this case I've taken the adjuster part and anti-seized the threads uh, so that hopefully it will be easy to adjust throughout its lifetime here so this is our spreader bar with the spring I found the spring and installed it uh, this green spring is our front spring front return spring on the front shoe this is our rear return spring is the yellow one or gold. Uh, this cable here is for our self adjuster and this is going to go onto the peg at the top uh, where our shoes sit against. I'm going to show you how that all fits together and this rear spring will hold that hold that eyelet into place on the cable. Now it's also important to note that 
when you hook this rear spring into the rear brake shoe that you first run it through the cable guide here before putting it into the shoe because that's what holds this cable guide in place. The uh, bottom part of the cable here will attach to our self adjuster. Okay. Through the hole at the top of the adjuster, which I can't seem to get into place here with one hand, like this. run around the cable guide this will sit on top of our actual adjuster here for the shoes and then this blue spring will hook into that self adjuster and into our the bottom of our front brake shoe it's all going to make sense here as we start putting things together but I wanted to kind of lay it out so you could understand how these components go together uh, because sometimes the instructions are kind of difficult to understand and once you understand where all the main components need to go it makes it quite a bit easier to get them in in the right orientation in the right order so this spring has to hold our eyelet for our uh, self adjust cable and it also has to go through the guide um, the front spring will go on last that goes on top and holds the uh, rear spring into place and you'll see that the, it's bent here to go over the top of that spring so they sit flat like that in place. And just make sure you anti-seize and lube everything up uh, before you start assembly and you'll be good to go. Okay guys, so we're going to assemble the brakes here on the rear drum of our Mustang on the driver's side. We'll give it everything. Thing. All the contact points, a good liberal coat of anti-seize to provide some lubrication for all these contact points. Anti-seize sticks in place really well, so it doesn't uh, move all over on you and squish out like grease does. Also going to anti-seize our hardware as we put things back together. So, first up, wheel cylinder. And I just stuck it in the wrong way. <laughs> uh, it's going to be one of those kind of days. Alright, next up, the pins. These are the pins that push out our brake pads, our brake shoes on the back side here. And these kind of clip into the rubber seal in the wheel cylinder also giving just a little bit of anti-seize inside the groove here that the brake shoe is going to uh, index into all right so here we've got all of our springs for this side these are our shoe retainers and our uh, front and rear springs this way and our bottom return spring also don't uh, don't lose your return spring for your spreader bar if it's not provided in your kit so before I get these shoes contaminated with a bunch of grease and anti seize in the shoe I'm going to put a layer of black tape just cheap black gaff tape over them just to try to help keep them clean and since this is our front shoe we can go ahead and install it put our pin in through the back side of the backing plate and into the correct hole on our shoe Spring retainer, spring, and then the outside additional retainer here. And just give it a twist. 
twist 90 degrees so it locks in to your retainer. And the rear shoe we've got to install our emergency brake lever arm which goes into I believe this top hole here. Put a little bit of lubricant on the pin so it can freely pivot just like that and then we take our horseshoe clip horseshoe clip and it just slips over the pin like so and then you just crimp the two ends together just a little crimp on the horseshoe will keep that pin from backing out and falling loose inside of our backing plate so now this shoe can go into place pin container spring and I'm going to clock the pin so that it's straight up and down 12, 12 and 6 o'clock that way should make it a little easier on me finding it with the pliers Okay, now we can start putting springs into place with our cable for our automatic adjuster and our cable guide that is held in place with the rear spring, which is what we're going to put on first, that's the gold one, and then the green front spring will go on top of, top of that one, like such rear spring, gold spring, goes through the cable guide and the back of the brake shoe and then we slide that over the post here in the front over the top of the cable like so there we go put the spreader in there and lube all your contact points so that all of this stuff can operate freely as it was intended. The spring goes in the front on the spreader bar. One thing I don't like about anti seize is gets everywhere as soon as you touch it all right and now we can put our front green spring through the spring hole and up over the post and hold your brake pad into place your shoe into place just like so okay so I'm going to hook up our e-brake cable, which I should have hooked up when I installed that rear brake shoe. But you're not, uh, you're not hopelessly lost at that point. You don't have to disassemble if, like me, you forgot to connect your cable. Um, run a screwdriver through holding the e-brake lever arm out. Pull the spring back on your e-brake cable. And just hook it on there. Make sure you lube it on your... Okay, now with the top side of our brake shoe, uh, brake shoes in place, our cable in place for the self-adjuster, spreader bar loosely fitted as it should be. Now we can come down here and put our adjuster and our self-adjusting self lock here into place. This one says L for left side, which is the side we're on. This just fits into the hole in the bottom of the brake shoe here and will push against our adjuster. Take your adjuster part and lube your threads with anti-seize. Collapse the adjuster fully 
uh, against the stop as your starting point. And our adjuster just sits on the bottom between the brake shoes. Okay, big blue bottom spring through the big hole in the brake shoe. And this closed end is going to hook onto your adjuster like so. So, put your cable, self-adjusting cable into place on the adjuster up in the oval on top which is also where the spring is going to connect to here. Hook it on the brake sh on the rear brake shoe and then connect your blue spring to the adjuster. That's what we're looking for right there, just a slight drag on the drum. The automatic adjusting feature will take care of the rest. Well guys, it's been a productive weekend here at the Vintage Speed Garage. Uh, this weekend we replaced all of the rear brake components, rear suspension bushings, and rear shocks on our 66 Mustang project. So now we've got polyurethane bushings uh, front and rear in the shackles, in the leaf springs, ready to go. We've got all new brake components, all the hardware, uh, brake shoes, everything's been wheel cylinders, all that's been swapped out on both sides of our Mustang. Uh, we've got the vent line in place, new hard lines, new flexible lines, so all of that stuff's taken care of and it's, you know, it's a good feeling to get the rear end of our Mustang situated and handled, uh, our brake system closed up, so now all we have to do is swap in our power brake booster and master cylinder uh, into our front engine compartment here and the brake system will be done. And we'll have our disc brakes in the front, drums in the back, proper disc drum proportioning valve, will be in good shape. But the bulk of the work here is done on the Mustang. The next step is going to be of course installing the master cylinder and booster and then uh, getting the motor broken in properly. You saw me replace uh, all of our leaf spring bushings using the hole saw method. Uh, I've also used presses, uh, the shop press in the shed here to do uh, leaf spring bushings and I think the easiest way is just to cut them out with a hole saw. You do end up killing your hole saw here. Uh, this might make good wheel for a skateboard or something but it's not very good as a hole saw anymore but uh, that was the easiest method cut out the bushing cut out the center of the bushing knock the pin out and uh, and then pry out the metal sleeve around the uh, around the leaf spring bushings that was ultimately the easiest way to do it press in your urethane bushings and reassemble for the shocks we ended up with a big pile of extra hardware here that was all laying in the back <laughs> on top of where the shocks mount uh, behind the back seat here on our Mustang. I'm not sure why all this was in there, uh, but I uh, cleaned all that out. Now we don't have any mystery noises uh, rolling around back there and thunking while the owner's driving her car. So yeah, that's pretty much going to wrap it up, guys. I think we're making good progress here on the Mustang. I'm going to be excited to get this thing running and driving and get it mobile at least uh, before we tackle the top installation, which is going to be one of the next big things coming here soon. We're going to replace this vinyl top with a nice new stay fast canvas top and a glass back window so that the uh, you don't have the old broken brittle plasticky back folding window. We're going to put a glass window in here uh, which takes a little bit of modification to make that fit and fold down properly but uh, it's going to be worth doing. The canvas top should last a lifetime if it's well maintained and uh, you don't have the flimsy flapping vinyl uh, cheapo 
top that Ford put on these cars to begin with. But for this video guys, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, that's it for today's project. Thank you for watching. If you're new, please click subscribe. We've got a lot of great stuff coming, including some OBS video coming soon. And we're going to be touching old blue, Parker's uh, Camper Special F250, which will soon, soon be more like an F100. Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting my hands on that project, doing some, some fab work, cutting and welding. We're going to shorten the bed. We're going to shorten the frame. We're going to put that thing on the ground and put some big wheels on it it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be badass so stick with us guys subscribe if you're new thanks for watching